Hi, I'm Catherine Diorio. This week on Check Please, we're taking a look back at BYOB restaurants that have kept our spirits up over these many years. So grab a bottle and join us as we pair you with the perfect places for Pilsner and Pinot Noir and best bets for bubbly and bourbon throughout the city. Our journey begins as Sales VP suggests a one-of-a-kind, blow-your-mind night out. A community manager takes us to one of Chicago's fantastic Filipino finds. But first, a football coach audibles on what he says is the best Italian spot in Bridgeport. I love to hear that they want to come back. In Chicago, we had so many places where we got like so many choices. And for me to have these people come back for the second time, third time, or become my regulars, and that brings me a lot of joy. There is few dishes that the people like to always come back and ask for. They cavatelli, it's a homemade pasta. Uh, we make it with the fresh ricotta cheese and melted mozzarella, and of course the Sicilian uh, rice balls. This is one of the best sausage and peppers I hear from people. Not from me, don't take it from me, take it from the customers. They're the best judges. And at the end, actually, I approach them, I go like, I hope you enjoy everything, how was everything? And they go like, it was great. I never thought of that what's gonna be this good. And, and that's when I, that makes me feel comfortable, made me feel good because I go like, okay, that's, that's the purpose. I called in and checked to make sure we're BYOB at, at Check Please, and you are. That is and since we're talking about a BYOB, <laughs> I brought some local beer from Half Acre, Daisy Nobody's Cutter. Nobody's ever brought in their own beer here. Well, I'm it's a the new guy to the show. first time for everything, right? Yeah. Alpha, can I offer you one? I will take one. All Thank right. you. I find that BYOBs have to rely on their food. Geo's is great. It's right in the middle of a the neighborhood. There's nothing else there for food. And you walk in, and you're... I hate the, the line like this because it's been said on the show, but you're literally in somebody's kitchen. Yeah. Well, I knew this was a restaurant inside of a deli, mm -hmm. but somehow I didn't process that it is literally <laughs> a <laughs> restaurant in the middle of a tables. deli. Um, but I, I mean, just mm -hmm. checkered tablecloths, and you're surrounded by the freezers of their pastas um, and their other fresh uh, food offerings on the walls, and you just never in a million years would guess that a little deli with a few tables in the middle of it would be serving these custom seafood and pasta yeah. and chicken dishes. I had no idea that I was going to be in for that kind of treat. I'm one of those people, I go in and I'm looking for <laughs> the tablecloth and the you know, all of the fruit things. She likes things. it fancy. Yeah. And, well. you know, I get there and I'm going, oh my goodness, what is this place? Yeah. And I played it safe with the fried calamari, and boy, was it good. And the food was definitely a treat. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I want them to realize that it's one of the most unique dining destinations in the country, that the things that we're doing here and the way that we're doing it is not being duplicated anywhere. Welcome to Elm. It's uh, great to have you guys with us tonight, and I would like to quickly introduce our team to you. That interaction and that the breaking down of the barriers between the culinary team and the guests is what we're about. You guys are free to get out of your uh, chairs, come back to the kitchen, hang out with us take pictures, ask questions. I pinch myself every day when I wake up and realize what it is that I'm coming into and how it is that I got here. And you know, this is a, a dream come true. So many times chefs are behind the walls and behind their own kitchens. They don't get to see the kind of emotion that uh, guests are feeling for their food. But we happen to have that luxury of being able to see how people are reacting to it. And it's special. I mean, that makes all the tribulations and trials in this business worthwhile to make people happy. Oh my God! It's a special occasion restaurant, certainly, um, but it's one where we have had, it, it really makes the occasion special. It's, uh, Philip Foss is a kind of a mad genius. The food is really inventive and creative and, and most importantly, delicious. That was our first experience ever being at a restaurant like that before. Mm. 
And even on his website, he says, you know, we don't want it to be pretentious or anything like that. And even still, we were a little bit nervous about it because we've never done that before. You basically started your meal and they said, lick your plate. Why don't you tell us about your experience? Right. That was an amazing uh, opener that from a childhood point of view, because there's a lot of child, childhood references in, in uh, the sure. chef's way to, uh, to approach the food. From an adult point of view, it's obviously a, a mind opener and it relaxes you. It's like a, you're, you're tripping. <laughs> so, so it's a psychedelic I think Philip is uh, love gastronomical that. <laughs> experience. You know, one of the dishes was the french fries and ice cream, where he had freeze-dried uh, vanilla ice cream, I guess, with potatoes inside of it, and they, they poured the uh, vanilla ice cream table side, and so all the smoke came up, and it's really a show, and it's really fun. You brought champagne with you, which is BYOB, and you brought champagne, which is the perfect to come in kind of to everything if you're not quite sure. When you come into the outside, you probably won't uh, expect much from it. This is good. We hope that you'll be overwhelmed when you come in. If you're looking for something a little adventurous, but delicious at the same time, we can provide you with that. The passion that we have, our team has, we pride ourselves on it. We have a chef, and I don't want anyone else to get in his way. He's good at what he does. He got his formal training in the Philippines at the best restaurant. So our chefs, the food is an art. We want to introduce authentic food, but we also want to extend the hospitality of the Philippines and just the overall experience. We want to present that culture when you come in. To us here, serving it and uh, sharing that experience with everyone, you know, that's an art for us. We all think it's something that people should try. Isla is proof positive that soul food isn't just grits and greens. You know, each time I think about this place, I get happy. You know, each time I smell the food, I get a little giddy, and when I eat it, Forget about it, it's on. I owe you, <laughs> John. Great, great, it great. was a great, great discovery. The place is a little bit unassuming, sure. I would say even uninspiring. It's sure. a strip mall, the front window is nothing to write home about. Then the food came and everything changed. And again, I, I didn't know much, so I do what I do when I go to a restaurant I don't know. I start looking what other people in the nearby tables are ordering and I went from some uh, pork in each or in each, uh, sorry, I'm butchering the name. It was delicious, served mm -hmm. with the vinaigrette. We oh, had, in the hell? In an app, appetizer, we had these mussels with a um, butter sauce. Fantastic. I mean, it has been a place where I'm dying to go back. I got the kare kare, I think is the correct yeah, yeah. pronunciation. It was the oxtail with eggplant and green beans and a peanut sauce. It was fantastic. Oh, it, with tripe too. <laughs> it, it, was, it was amazing. It was served on the bone and every bite. That was definitely my favorite dish. Some BYOB places can get really crowded on the weekends, sure. and I feel like this is enough off the beaten path for me at least yeah. um, that I would definitely bring a group there and bring a lot of wine and <laughs> have a great meal. Our BYOB binge continues as an operations manager takes a luscious look at a Southside hidden gem. A paralegal proves that Pisco Sours and Peruvian food are plentiful in Chicago. And next, a sports executive says his sensational seafood spot pairs with just about anything you can think of. I'd love the conversation to start off with, the food was great, right? The core of us is just having fun. <laughs> kind of leave your table manners at the door. You come in, you relax, you put on a bib and just have a good time. We specialize in Cajun seafood with an Asian fusion twist to it. We have a lot of Asian-inspired ingredients in our house boil. It gives everything the flavor. My brothers and I make a great team because we're all good at something different. 
it absolutely feels amazing just to kind of sit back and then to absorb it all. It, it's something else. It has no parallel in Chicago. So it is seafood that has kind of a New Orleans flair, um, but it has some elements of, you know, like Vietnamese culture in it. And you have the crawfish or the, or the crab and the shrimp uh, in a plastic bag. It was like medieval times meets Louisiana. I, think. <laughs> yeah. I loved the place, but it was a trip. And it was just because I had no idea what to expect. I'm not really used to eating in that style anyway. People were just in the rows, mowing down on this food. Just people were there to eat. There's nothing angry about it. This place is so great. I love it. Um, I went with one girlfriend, and I almost wish we had about five other people with us. Um, we ordered two one-pound bags of, we got clams, and we got shrimp, and then we got calamari. So we had a ton of food. We had a ton left over. And it's BYOB. Bruce Demeanor would be really nice with the spicy food, or <laughs> my favorite is ice cold beer with it. There were people with beer, people with wine, and people with Jameson, right? I mean, they, they, the, the, the BYOB ran the gamut too. So, I mean, it's just, it's part of the, of the, of the ambiance of the place, and I just think it's awesome. I'm very happy and I'm very great to serve to our customer and also I appreciate that our customer always give us the chance to try different kind of food, never got a brand, always got to be, you know, support us. So that point is I want to strive to do my best. I want to do a pretty simple menu and let people try different kind of cuisine. So we need to set up the soup, salad, appetizer, entry, and dessert is including different countries. The idea for that put together. Even though sometimes empty, sometimes just two tables, I'm, but I'm still very happy to serve with our customer. The point is not make really make money, just, just let people know about more Chinese culture. I saw it driving down the street and I said, that's a weird place for a restaurant. Uh, looked online and found out about it and went and I just think for the value and the quality of food, it's pretty much unmatched. There's some seafood, some pork, you know, some duck. There's something for everybody at this place. I had an incredible time, like the food is amazing. It's got a little bit of like a, I'd say like modern French flair to it. Mm -hmm. So it's really cl like crisp and clean flavors and it's plated beautifully. Like even the dishes, like there was like a the little bowl my ice cream was served in. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, can I have this? If I hadn't known about it through Check Please, I never would go there. It's 27 miles from our home and we are going back. <laughs> it was wonderful. It's also BYO. Um, which makes it a great place to go with a large group because it, you don't have a large uh, wine or beer expense when you eat. I usually tell my single guy friends to take girls there on dates because you can bring a, a great <laughs> bottle of wine, your favorite bottle of wine that you like, and uh, the caliber of the food is such that where the girl won't really care that it's only $25. She won't think you're, she won't think you're a cheapskate or, you know, trying to save money. She'll think you just bought it because it's a great atmosphere. get a wonderful food, wonderful food, and a great time, and uh, enjoy the, you know, the most traditional dishes from Peru. We have like a lomo saltado, we have ceviches, and um, ají de gallina, and seco de cordero, it's lamb, lamb stew, and all made like really, really authentic Peruvian dish. The foundation of Peruvian cuisine is from the native culture, from the Inca culture. With that came preparations from the Spanish, and eventually in the 1800s, from the Chinese, Japanese, and Italians. People from all over the world come to this restaurant. Peruvians that are missing a little taste of home, Americans looking for a culinary adventure, and what I've noticed is a lot of people come from the Asian community to see how their dishes are reinvented in a Latin American style. We have, you know, authentic Peruvian cuisine. 
and I, I enjoy when the people enjoy the food. They, they like to smile, you know, when they leave in the day, thank you very much because the food is wonderful. You know, I'm feeling happy because, and uh, we got a good job. Well, obviously, I'm Latina, so there's a, <laughs> there's a plethora of Mexican restaurants, I think Colombian restaurants, you'll find them all over the place. Peruvian, I don't think not, not so much. Um, there's been a few, but I had picante is by far my favorite. I feel like I'm tasting my dad's cooking or family members in Peru. It's just delicious. If you want a little spice, a little flavor, um, you definitely need to check out Picante. Uh, overall, she's right. There was uh, there's some good flavors, some good some good tastes. The ceviche I had was excellent. The ceviche mixto. The seafood was tender. I thought that was great. In fact, when they serve you with the bread and the dipping sauce, jalapeno, garlic, olive oil, salt, and pepper. How heavenly is that? It, it's excellent. We did the uh, lomo saltado, which is a... That is my favorite. It was rice, uh, uh, steak, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, french fries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm with Frank with the ceviche. Mm -hmm. The ceviche mix that I had, the same one. The portion itself is large, uh, very large, and I love that they threw in some sweet potato. I mean, it's not even like I'm trying to toot toot my Peruvian horn, <laughs> right. but it is so good. If you bring Pisco, they'll supply the sour. Pisco <laughs> is a, a great a brandy, sort mm -hmm. of the national drink of Peru, mm -hmm. and it creates a, a wonderful cocktail called the Pisco Sour. You don't need too many to get the night going. Try. That's why you Definitely drink it and you that. go, I, I picante. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our Best in BYOBs continues as a product developer shows us why his sushi spot is a sensational place to bring your own. A labor educator takes us for sizzling Mexican food where meandering mariachis blend in perfectly with all kinds of drinks. And next, an IT salesman tells us why his terrific tie joint spices up your palate and fires on all cylinders. ATK and this Thai kitchen. Some customer that I heard from, they say, why, why am I going to, why am I going to ATK? Is it going to be real Thai food? Is it Thai people cooking in the kitchen? This is me, ATK. A is me, Andy. So I'm here, and and my name is Andy. So you come here, you get real Thai food. So I I guarantee it. <laughs> It's more like, you know, casual, so nothing, nothing too serious. The best thing is like BYOB, so you can come here and bring your own beverage, bring your own alcohol. I hope we can improve about everything, you know, and to make people come here, have the food, and then went back home with a happy face and, you know, like smiling face. <laughs> It's my go-to Thai restaurant in the city, and in you know, the Lincoln Park Lakeview area, there's a ton of them. Um, this one has that really authentic taste with really bold flavors. I hope you like spicy. Love it. Um, every dish on the menu is going to be spicy. There's just so many different things to choose from, and nothing on the menu has really been a miss for us yet. Mm -hmm. Go outside the box. Go with something that looks weird to you, the basil preserved egg. I'm not going to find that many other places in the city. I was like... The flavors were amazing. But then there's other stuff you're like, what? What? Uh, I don't know what that is. And it sounds really good. And it is very, <laughs> really flavorful. And the noodle thing comes in this pot and it's got this really dark chocolate brown broth and a lot of like vegetables and, um, you know, herbs and leaves and stuff like that. And that was the one where you got to the bottom and you're like, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, I think my brain is going to explode, but like, I would get that. that in a second. The food is definitely solid, and I totally understand what you're saying about it uh, presenting uh, traditional Thai flavors with new ingredients or in other ways. We had the uh, palm fret, I believe it's a fish. So that was great, and I also had the, the basil mussels. You know, the, the flavor was like a spicy basil chicken. They have a lot of things that are just, you would never Think to order and think to have on a restaurant menu that they do really well. Oh, you respect fiesta. It's a great em environment, uh, the atmosphere, the food, the norteño bands, the music, it's the uh, palm trees, it's 
it's, uh, there is no way to describe it. You need to come here. It's not like every other seafood that we have in Chicago. It's really, even the names are unique, like the rompecolchón, the mattress breaker, the paella, the camarones palapa. Some people come here like early in the morning and will leave like at eight at night, you know, just because they get to relax and forget that they're in Chicago for a minute or two. They also say, oh, and, and you know what, it's BYOB, take your own stuff, and it's a nice patio outdoors, and that they like a, a lot of the dishes. I mean, people get uh, really fascinated. And working with your family is just great. I'm very proud of him, my aunt, my whole, everybody that works here, and it's just fun. It's basically fun. Well, I, I will say if, if there is a, a meaning for success, I, I'll say uh, that's very, it's fulfilling. We feel just so happy. I chose it because it's kind of this unexpected restaurant by the tracks <laughs> on this corner. I'm not so sure. Um, but we went and I was blown away. Like the food was really good. I uh, absolutely love it. It's exactly the type of place that I like to eat at. Um, uh, it's. Uh, reasonably priced, the, it's BYOB, it's BYOB, it's got, it's got, it's, it's BYOB. BYOB. <laughs> <laughs> it's got uh, fake sharks, palapas, uh, again, BYOB. And it's really like fun and loud and there's mariachis. I mean, there's basically anything you want on a good Saturday night. I grew up in the culture of that restaurant. I'm half Hispanic. Um, I know all about the loudness, love it, love the music, love all that stuff. And we, we went, and I'm like, holy cow, it's a great time. I loved mm -hmm. it. I can't recommend it enough. It feels like a surf shack you pulled off the road yep. to stop at, <laughs> and you went and got some awesome ceviche that just got out of the ocean. They just got the seafood out of the ocean. So it's, yeah. I love all dining experiences, don't get me wrong. And, and truthfully, for a casual, like, friends, guys night out, La Palapa was perfect. I would say it's a sushi bar. You know, it's a place to hang out with friends. We picked Buck Town because of the uh, diversity of the uh, people and business here. Um, exactly what Buck Town has to offer. Uh, you know, um, open-minded a lot. A white dragon is a trim tempura inside. A cream cheese, a wasabi masako, which is a marinade, a wasabi flavor, fish egg, a scallion hot sauce, and then we roll it, and we top with the tempura crumbs, a wasabi mayonnaise, and eel sauce. That was make us famous for, I guess. We don't have time to do anything. We just make, 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 make sushi, make white dragon. We just trying to do our best every day, and we always talk about what we can do better tomorrow. Every day we do that and, uh, and uh, we make sure everybody do everything right all the time. It is um, a, a superb sushi restaurant. The quality of the fish there is absolutely superb. I think they do a great job with the rolls. I thought the service was phenomenal. We had a group of people. We had the white dragon roll, which Ooh. Definitely was one of the ones where the last one's sitting there and everyone's like, do you want it? Everyone's <laughs> trying to be polite before reaching out and just snatching it right off the table. Sarah, you're telling me that you're a bit skeptical going to Coast in the, at first, but then... Yeah, they won you over? Yeah. <laughs> they won me over. They won me over. I'm very loyal to some sushi restaurants in my neighborhood, but everything we ate, for the most part, was delicious, super fresh. Yes. They had a special appetizer that we got, the um, hamachi carpaccio. We had which that too. That was very good. Was right? superb. fantastic. Absolutely which was superb. fantastic and really good. I could have eaten like six of those. <laughs> and the service was great. Um, it was a comfortable environment. Yeah, they easily won me over. Yep. I think that it's a very nice trend, the idea that more and more places are going with the BYO concept, put, putting the ability of the diner to come up with their own wine pairings, their own wine choices, instead of having to depend on hoping that you can get something that you like out of the wine list. Everyone there, um, from a service standpoint, just they kill it. They do a great job, and I, I think that uh, the ambiance of the place is great. 
the location's a win, and I think there's something for everyone, and I, I think it's a fantastic mix. We hope you've enjoyed the look back at some of our favorite spots to BYO. Don't forget to join us for more episodes of Check, Please as we explore the dynamic and diverse restaurants throughout the Chicago area. Until then, I'm Catherine DiOrio. Thanks for watching. For more information about the restaurants featured on Check, Please, go to wttw.com slash checkplease.